Volkswagen Chiron 2012 2 liter TDI engine. I'm planning to do subframe bushing, lower engine mount replacement today. I'm not gonna bore you with a long video, just a quick key moments of this, how I'm trying, how I'm gonna do it. Basically, it's subframe. There we go. This one, it's all cracked. It's all destroyed. And we're gonna replace it today. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove the subframe. I'm halfway through. I've removed the lower arm. It's quite simple. Sorry, my shaking hands. One bolt through here, two bolts in here. There is one bolt that goes through here. Remove that, then uh, on the other side, then uh, we're gonna undo this bolt as well. Now we will remove two, these two as well, so we'll take this arm out. Then we'll have to disconnect the power steering rack from the subframe. It held on three bolts, 16 mil, one. I've, I've put those in, so I don't lose them, so I make sure that I put bolt, bolts where they are 16 mil bolt two and on the other side there is just one there's just empty hole don't know what for but there is three so one two three then we have four big 18 millimeter bolts that hold the subframe one two and those are quite deep i've taken them out already one and Two. These ones are going through the hole of the um, control arm. So I'm gonna take the subframe out. Steering rack will stay connected because it's connected to the st steering wheel there. This is right hand drive by the way, so if you're wondering why the steering is on this side. So let's take the subframe out and I'll show you how I'm gonna do it. Oh yes, of course we're gonna have to remove this little 13 millimeter that holds the exhaust exhaust bracket. And of course, don't forget to remove this little cable out of this bracket. That is the um, oil level sensor. So we just take it out of here. There we go. So that we don't break it. And then subframe is gonna go down. So once again, there are four bolts that, four big, you won't miss it. Four big bolts like this, and there's inside there. Four big bolts hold the subframe. Three bolts that hold the steering rack. One, two, three. And then disconnect arms, simple. And then of course we have anti-roll bar which is held by two 13 millimeter little bolts here. This one's here. Or alternatively, I can leave it stuck to the subframe. That's what I'm gonna do because I wanna do, I, I want to have quite a lot of access there today and for to do something else. And so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove this ball, ball joint out of here. So, and I, I'm, I'm gonna keep the anti-roll bar stuck to the subframe. And one more thing before you drop the subframe, there's a little 10 millimeter bolt here, where I'm pointing with my finger, which is holding this wiring for the um, steering rack. I'm gonna disconnect that as well. As I took the subframe out, I've discovered that the anti-roll bar goes over the bush, so I'm gonna remove the uh, anti-roll bar disconnected from the subframe. Just two bolts here, two bolts here, 13 mil on this side. Little thing, there are some washers here on a subframe that holds to the body, so make sure you don't lose these washers, because I'm gonna turn it around. I'll just put, it, put them aside somewhere. Next thing, we need to get these two bushes out. There are two bushes, one from the bottom, one from the top, uh, one with the thread, another one you just put the bolt through. You use some sole, you can, because it's just a plastic, to cut the edges. You can cut the edges in two places, and then you take it out. Use a chisel anyway, go for destroy. Try not to damage subframe, but you shouldn't do it because it's, it's a metal. You just 
get rid of these plastics. So I've got this little electric tool. You don't have to have electric. So I cut out the middle with the saw. And once you got this outside shell loose, you can pretty much take it, take it out. Once you broke this plastic, do the same for the bottom one. Right, the last thing is out, destroyed. Now we've got two new ones. The one with the thread go, will go from the top. The one without the thread will go from the bottom. All we need is just to press it in. And to press it in, I'm gonna use a tool. I have this little box here, bought it on the internet. If the job you're doing, this one, is one-off job, take it to the garage, maybe, because I don't see much point uh, of buying just for one job. Maybe not, depending what price you're getting it. Uh, I'll put the link in description to eBay. The few sellers sell them at different prices. So it's uh, four different roads, different diameter with the thread, with the nuts and even uh, some bearings here. So they s or can turn normally and then you have a bunch of different cylinders so if you need to press in press out anything like a bush or bearing you can take the correct diameter for that and one one diameter from in one diameter from out and then you press it in or press it out and there is like a this like a washer so i don't know what they call them there's quite solid metal so you can uh, find the right groove for that the only trouble with this tool is that the biggest diameter is just slightly under the uh, diameter of this plastic ring outside so i'm not in order not to damage this bush what i'm gonna do i'm gonna use this metal washer thread and then i have two planks of wood with a hole so what we're gonna do we're gonna just Put apply wood on it and then put the rod through lubricate it and make sure that it goes nice and smooth the other thing that what we know about these bushes being pressed in they tend to break and they tend to break in a weakest spot which is see this one is not connected to anything so what we're gonna do I'm gonna either put some wood inside here so it just holds or maybe just fold paper really so it stays tight here so it doesn't break so this is what we're looking like i understand it's only paper you can use maybe some pieces of wood or something but i made it pretty tight make sure that you can take it out on the other end once you put it in so we're going to use some lubrication Put it straight and then apply that wood and the metal and press it in so this is our amazing construction make sure it all sits straight 27 millimeter nut make sure that the window in the bush matches this window and it's all sits straight from all sides nice and straight and then we slowly start turning this 27 millimeter. I'm trying to take it really carefully. So this is where we are now. It's gone halfway in and the narrow bit with the window doesn't seem to be in. So I don't think there is much use of these papers. So what we're going to do, we're going to take these papers out and try to push this little bit in. That sticks out a bit. So this is what the problem with these, I've, I've taken out again. Uh, basically when you push it in, this bit before the window, because it's all getting squished, it, it goes a little away, goes out a little bit, and then it doesn't want to go inside the frame. So what we're gonna do, we'll forget the papers. We're gonna try it again, nice and careful, to make sure that it doesn't break, and this bit goes in as well. Now I've done little amendments here. I've cut out a piece of uh, wood so it gets to the edge of the bush. So what is happening, this narrow bit as we push in, it 
it bends and it wants to stick out so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna push it in and hold it with a screwdriver so it goes in as well together with the rest of the bush let's see if it works another little upgrade I've cut out all the wood around just to make sure that all edges go in and I put little pry bar to keep this this piece of uh, bush straight so it doesn't stick out and it goes in together as we push it in I think that should work this time and another little upgrade I ended up putting chisel here because it's the strongest bit I've got I've got some bigger chisels but it doesn't matter the one that's suitable I put some lubrication there so that little bit doesn't stick out I will try to push it in now and another update I ended up having two chisels in here eventually and then I also took this out and I grind this end of a little bit so it gets in easier and finally I managed to put it in so this end is coming in now so all I have to do is just tighten up and just make sure it sits in deeper properly nice one so with a few last taps uh, put it in we have some little marks here from chisels well it didn't do too much damage but something I had to do maybe you go a bit more careful so now we're gonna put the top bit in I'll try to do the same so I have just grinded this bit a little bit so whenever it gets towards getting in into the subframe it will be easier for it to get through so we're gonna apply the same forces as we did on the other end I think this top end should be a bit easier so this is what I'm doing here I use our magic tool and as I press as, I, as it goes in I apply pry bar here to straighten this bit up so it goes in as it should the sun came out and luckily it's going in what I was doing I was poking with the screwdriver this bit that's sticking out with the little taps of the hammer so it gets in and make sure it goes in and now the whole thing is going in and I'm extremely happy about it there we go that's it ladies and gentlemen this is how we replace the bushing on a subframe on VW Skoda also see us so whichever way you press it in the difficult part to make make sure that this narrow bit of the bushing as a whole bushing goes in so narrow bit go, gets in as well otherwise it likes because of the pressure it likes to stick out a bit and then um, it can break but we've done it and we're happy when you're putting your subframe on don't forget those uh, washers here and also try to align with the um, clean marks you know that you have uh, on their uh, underbody on the car's frame because um, it still probably will mess up your wheel alignment anyway a little bit because uh, there is a bit of a play in this hole so the when you're putting subframe in it can go tiny bit left right so uh, if you take taking the subframe off best thing is get to your nearest tire shop check the alignment just in case and put everything back in reverse sequence. Thank you for watching.